Dr. Olson, there's a lot of confusion around where we put the needle into the chest to decompress. What's ITLS's position? Well, I don't know really that I would say that there's confusion as much as that there have been for many years two sites that are recommended for needle decompression. Uh, the first is the second intercostal space at the midclavicular line. And the original location that was put forward was the use of the fourth intercostal space at the mid-axillary line. Over the years, the use of the anterior site has evolved in civilian EMS because it's easier to reach when the patient is lying supine on the stretcher. However, there have been several uh, studies that suggest that we've had problems with needle decompression in that location working, uh, particularly the fact that many EMS agencies today no longer carry long catheter over needle combinations or purpose-built chest decompression catheters so that the length is often not sufficient to enter the pleural cavity. And this has been documented in a number of studies quite well. Because of the incidence of penetrating chest trauma in the combat situation, uh, the need to needle decompress attention pneumothorax is something that is encountered by military medical personnel worldwide. And because of the way body armor is shaped and fitted to the individual, access of that second intercostal space can be very difficult without removing the armor. This delays carrying out what is potentially a life-saving uh, procedure. So the military medical world has recommended the use of needle decompression in the lateral position, which again is the fourth intercostal space at the mid-axillary line. What we've done in our position statement is basically go over the indications for needle decompression, which is the clinical presence of a tension pneumothorax, and then talk about the two locations and the fact that either one is acceptable. Uh, there are, again, trade-offs. The challenge with the anterior approach is not having a long enough needle, and we recommend that you use a uh, catheter that is either three and a quarter inches long or at least eight centimeters in length to assure that it's long enough to enter into the pleural space and decompress the tension pneumothorax. What advice would you offer to medical directors? Oh, I would ask them to go out and review their protocol for the use. Uh, if they right now allow one site or the other only to modify the protocol to make either acceptable so that in those situations that arise where one is preferable over the other, the personnel have the permission to do it, and to make sure that their personnel practice doing this procedure. It's something done very infrequently. Many medics will go through their entire career and never do it, but at the time they need to do it, they need to know how to do it, choose the correct site, use the right piece of equipment, and apply it during the correct indications. What's the key learning point here? The key learning point is to know the indications for needle decompression, to know what the landmarks are for the appropriate site, to use the appropriate piece of equipment, uh, and to constantly reassess the patient. Needle decompression is not a definitive management of attention pneumothorax, but it is a temporizing measure that can allow you to help stabilize your patient and get them to definitive care. It is important for instructors to emphasize to students that the different sites are not mutually exclusive, but the risks to the patient and the ability to promptly and effectively perform the procedure when indicated will help dictate whether the anterior or lateral approach is most appropriate in any given situation. Instructors should teach the procedure based on the standards set forth by the course they are instructing. What is important to convey to the student is how to recognize attention pneumothorax and how to carry out the appropriate field management, rather than to focus on which interspace or approach the catheter should be inserted.